My ex-girlfriend hid my child for five years. Just as we start co-parenting, I get a dream job offer 500 miles away. I never imagined that being a situation. But life has a way of throwing fur balls from the least expected. I'm Zach 28 now. And I recently discovered that I have a five-year-old daughter. Who never knew existed, understand how I got here. I need to take you back to the beginning. Six years ago, I was a fresh college graduate. Eager to start my career in software and development. I had landed a job at a promising tech startup in the city. And I was ready to take on the world. That's when I met Tina 27F at a mutual friend's house woman park. She was studying to become a veterinarian. And we hit it off immediately. We bonded over our shared love for old SCI fine and movies. And our dreams of making a difference in the world. Our relationship progressed quickly. Within a few months we were practically inceptive. We'd spend weekends exploring the city, trying out new restaurants, and planning our future together. It was brilliant fun and had a wicked sense of humor. Thought I had found my soul. We dated for two years and things seemed perfect. We had even started discussing marriage and our plans for future. I remember one night sitting on the roof of my apartment building, looking at the stars and talking about how many kids we want. Nina said she wanted at least two, and I agree, it felt like we were on the same page about everything. But then out of nowhere, Tina broke up with me. It was a regular Tuesday evening. I had just gotten home from work, excited to tell her about a new project I was assigned to start. Instead, I found her sitting on the couch, a packed bag by her feet. She told me she needed space and we wanted different things in life. I was blindsided I tried to understand, to figure out what had changed, but she wouldn't give me a clearance. She just said she needed to focus on her and studies. And that our relationship was holding her back. I was devastated for weeks. I couldn't eat or sleep properly. I threw myself into my work, staying late at the office, and taking an extra project just to keep my mind up. My friends tried to cheer me up, drag me out to bars, or set me up on dates, but my heart wasn't I kept replaying our relationship in my head. Trying to figure out where it all went wrong. Slowly, I started to piece my life back together. I got promoted to work started going to the gym regularly. And even tried my hand of painting again. But none of the relationships felt right. They all seemed to pale in comparison to what I have retained. Fast forward to three months ago. It was a beautiful Saturday afternoon. And I decided to take advantage of the nice by weather. By going for a run in the local park. As I was pulling down near the playground. I saw a little girl caught my attention. She had my eyes and my smile. At first I thought I was imagining things, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I knew her something. Then I saw Tina walking up to her and my world turned upside down. She looked different her hair was shorter and she seemed more mature. But it was definitely her eyes man. And I saw the color drain from the face. The little girl oblivious to attention. Ran off to play on the swing, giving us a chance to talk. Tina tried to make small talk, asking how I've been, but I cut straight to the chicks. I asked her if a little girl was her daughter, and she not. Then I asked the question that had been forming in my Since mind. Since I first saw the child. Is she mine, Tina? Silence was all the answer of me. She eventually admitted that yes. Natalie was my daughter. She found out she was pregnant shortly after our breakup. But decided not to tell because me. Because she thought I wasn't ready for father. She said she knew how important my career was to me and didn't want to burden me with a child. I was furious how could she make that decision for me. I missed out on five years of my daughter's because life because Tina decided I wasn't ready. We had a heated argument right there in the park. Our voice is low but intense. To avoid drawing attention, I demanded a paternity test. Not because I doubted Natalie was mine. But because I knew I needed for legal purposes. Tina agreed, probably realized that she had no choice. The next few weeks were at work. Paternity test confirmed what I already knew in my heart. Natalie is my daughter. Now I'm trying to navigate this new reality, and it's overwhelming. I want to be part of Natalie's life. But Tina is making a difference. She's setting all these rules. And restrictions on when and how now I can she see. says it's to protect our daughter. But I can't help feeling like she's punishing for me. For something that wasn't my fault. To complicate matters growth. My family is furious with Tina. When I told my parents about the situation. My mom broke down in tears. Devastated She that had missed out the on. The first five years of her granddaughter's life. My dad usually the calm one. Was uncharacteristically angry. They're pushing me to go for full custody. Saying Tina doesn't deserve to be Natalie's primary for character. For after what she did I'm torn. On one hand, I'm angry at Tina for keeping the secret and loving of me. precious fears with my daughter. On the other hand, I don't want to disrupt Natalie's life more than necessary. She's innocent in all of this and I want to do what's best for her. But what is best for her? Is it staying primarily with the mother she's known all in life? Or having equal time with both parents? My friends are divided on the mission. My best friend Jake thinks I should fight for best. He argues that Tina forfeited her right to make unilateral decisions and about Natalie. And she chose Natalie. to keep her a secret. But my colleague Maria, who went through a messy custody battle herself, 
advises me to take it slow and build a relationship Graduate, with Natalie. she warns that a lengthy legal battle can traumatize Madly and damage any chance of the corporate parenting co. relationship with Tina. I'm also worried about how this will affect my current girlfriend, Rebecca 26F, who have been dating for a year. We met at a coding boot camp. I was teaching on weekends and hit it off immediately. She's smart ambitious and we share a lot of common interests. When I told her about Natalie, she was shocked but supportive. However, I can tell she's struggling with the idea of me having a child with my ex. We had talked about our future together and suddenly those plans came up in the air. I've started spending time with Natalie and she's amazing. She's smart funny and has so much energy. She loves animals just like her mom and gets excited about the smallest things. Every time I see her reminded of all the moments I've missed. Her first words her first steps. Her first day of school all gone because of Tina's decision. The financial aspect of the situation is another point of intention. I want to contribute to Natalie's upbringing. But Tina and I can't agree on how much or how it should be done. She seems to think that because she raised Natalie alone for five years. She gets to make all the decisions now. But I want to be involved in every aspect of Natalie's including life. Including decisions about her education, healthcare and general upbringing. I'm at a loss I want to be a good father. But I also want justice for what was taken from me. How do I move forward? How do I build a relationship with my daughter? While dealing with all this anger and resentment towards mother. And how do I balance all of this with my current relationship? And the rest of my life any advice would be appreciated. I feel like I'm drowning in a situation I never asked before. And I don't want to make any decisions that I'll regret later. How do I make this right not just for me, but for now update one. It's been two months since my last post and a lot has happened. First I want to thank everyone for their advice and support. Your comments and messages have been a lifeline. During this tumultuous time, after much deliberation and consultation, with a family lawyer, I decided to take legal action to establish my parental rights and work rights. out a formal custody agreement. It wasn't an easy decision, but I felt it was necessary to ensure I had a legal right to be part of Madeline's life. The process has been challenging to say the least. Tina initially resists, claiming that disrupting Natalie from the team would be harmful. She argued that Natalie was thriving under the current that arrangement. That introducing me fully into her life would only confuse and upset. However, my lawyer helped me push for a temporary visitation schedule while we work out the details of more permanent arrangement. For the past month, I've been seeing Natalie twice a week and every other weekend. It's been a roller coaster of emotions. Every moment with her is precious, but it's also a stark reminder of all the time it cost. Natalie is a bundle of energy curiosity. She loves dinosaurs and can recite the names of at least 20 different. She gets excited about the smallest things, like finding a uniquely shaped vehicle and colorful rock. One particularly difficult moment was when Natalie Why asked I haven't me. been around before. Struggle to find an age-appropriate way to explain the about situation. About Bad Mountain Team. I simply told her that sometimes grown UPS make mistakes. But that I love her very much. I'm here now it wasn't a perfect dancer. But it seemed to satisfy her for the moment still. I know this is a conversation we need to revisit. As she gets older and understand more. My relationship with Tina remains tense. We're trying to be civil for Natalie's sake. But sacred. there's still a lot of unresolved anger in Between her. Between us she's been more cooperative with visitation schedule. But I can tell she's not happy about her. Every handover is awful. With hoarse smiles instilled in small talk for Natalie's benefit. Last week we had our first major disagreement about Natalie's upcoming. I learned that Tina have been feeding Natalie a strictly vegetarian diet. While I respect Tina's personal choice to be vegetarian, I don't believe it's right to impose that on Natalie without discussing it with me. We had a heated argument about which ended with us agreeing to consult the pediatric nutritionist to ensure Natalie's diet with balance regardless of whether it includes meat or not. My family especially my parents have been over the moon about meeting Natalie. They've showered her with gifts and attention which has been lovely to see but has also caused some friction with team. She feels like they're trying to buy Natalie's affection while my parents feel like they're making up lost huh i've had to play media reminding everyone that the most important thing is natalie's and happiness. well-being my mom in particular has been struggling with the situation she's oscillated between anger and tina for keeping natalie and a guilt secret. for not being there for the first five years of her grandmother's life she's been seeing a therapist to work for these emotions which i think has been helpful as for rebecca my girlfriend things have been strength She's been trying to be supportive, but I can see the toll this is taking on our relationship. She's feeling sidelined as more and more of my time and energy goes towards and Natalie. dealing with this situation. We had a long talk last where week where she expressed her peers about where she fits into my life now. We're working on finding a balance, but it's not easy. I love Rebecca. But I also know that Natalie has to be my priority right now. One positive development is that I've started attending a support for group. parents in similar situations. It's been incredibly helpful to talk to others who understand what I'm going through. Some of their stories have made me realize my that situation all. is different. It could be much worse. There's a guy in the group.
who didn't find out about his child until they were 16. Hearing the story made me grateful that I least have the opportunity to be part of Natalie's While life. While she's still young financially, things are still up in the air. My lawyer is working on establishing a fair child supporter, but it's complicated given the unusual circumstances. I've started putting money aside for Natalie's future, including a college fund which gives me some peace of mind however. Tina and I still can't agree on how to handle everyday expenses. She seems to resent any financial contribution, as if accepting my money somehow diminishes her goal as Natalie's primary character for the past five years. As we move forward with legal process, I'm trying to focus on building my relationship with Natalie. It's not always easy and there are moments when the anger towards Tina threatens to overwhelm, but then Natalie will say something funny or give me a hug, and all that anger melts away. I'm learning to separate my feelings about Tina from my relationship with Natalie, but it's a daily struggle. I know we have a long road ahead. There will be more challenges, more disagreements, and probably more heart. But I'm committed to being the best father I can be. Regardless of the circumstances, Natalie deserves nothing less. Thank you all again for your support. Your words of encouragement and advice have met more than you know. I'll update again when there are significant developments. Update 2 It's been another 3 months. And I wanted to give you all an update on my situation and with Tina, Natalie. And Tina things have taken some unexpected turns. Both good and bad first. The good news. After several mediation sessions and negotiations through our Tina lawyers, Tina and I have finally reached the custody agreement. I now have Natalie every Wednesday night and every other plus weekend. Plus two weeks during the summer and alternating holidays. It's not perfect, but it's a huge improvement from where we started. Natalie seems to be adjusting well to the new arrangement. She's always excited to see me. And we started developing our own little traditions. Every Wednesday, we have a breakfast for dinner night where we make pancakes together. It's become something she looks forward to all week. Last Wednesday, she insisted insisted on making pancakes shaped like dinosaurs. It was messy, but seeing her laugh as she tried to make a Rex-shaped pancake was worth every bit of battery. Never clean up now for the not-so-good news. My relationship with Rebecca ended about a month ago. Despite our best effort, the strain of the situation proved too much of this. She felt like she couldn't compete with my newfound responsibilities. As a father and honestly, I couldn't get her the attention she deserved. It was a mutual decision, but it still hurts. Rebecca was a big part of my life past year, and adjusting to being single again Again. Also navigating fatherhood has been challenging her. On a more positive note, I've made some progress in my relationship between. We're not friends by any means, but we've managed to establish a more cultural co-parenting relationship. We've even started using a co-parenting app to communicate about Natalie's schedule of needs, which has helped reduce direct conflict between us. Last week we managed to have a civil conversation about Natalie's upcoming Conference school. without any arguments. It felt like a small victory. However just when things seemed to be settling into a new Norman, another complication arose in his parents who had never met before. Reached out to me. They explained that they had only recently learned about Natalie. In my situation apparently, Tina had kept Natalie's paternity a secret from them as well, telling them that Natalie's father was not in the picture. This revelation has caused a rift between Tina and her parents. They're upset that she kept such a big secret from and them and denied them the opportunity to know their granddaughter's father. They've been reaching out to me, wanting to meet and be part of Natalie's life. While I appreciate their interest, it's added another layer of complexity to an already complicated situation. Tina is furious that her parents contacted me and is me now threatening to restrict my access to Natalie by allowing her parents to be involved. I'm torn about how to handle this. On one hand I believe Natalie deserves to know all of the family. On the other hand I don't want to jeopardize the delicate balance. We've achieved in our custody arrangement. It feels like I'm walking a title, trying to do what's best for Natalie. While navigating the complex dynamics between all the adults in life. As for Natalie she continues to amaze me every day. She started taking an interest in coding of all things. When she found out what I do for work, she asked me to teach now. We spend some of our time together doing simple coding exercises on a kid-friendly programming website. Seeing her eyes light up when she makes her first animation As work. indescribable it makes me wonder what other interests and talents you might develop when she grows and old. And I'm grateful that I'll get to be there to see. I'm still attending the support, which has been a lifeline through all of this. Hearing other stories and sharing has my helped own. me process my emotions and giving me valuable perspectives on both parenting. Last week I shared about the situation with Tina's parents and the group had some insightful advice on how to approach Looking her. ahead I know there will be more challenges. Natalie will start school soon, which will bring its own set of complications. Tina and I will need to agree on which school she'll attend. I will have a parent-teacher and so much more.
but for now I'm focusing on cherishing every moment I have with her and doing my best to be the father she deserves. Thank you all for your continued support. I'll update again if there are any significant changes. Update 3 It's been 6 months since my last update and I wanted to the share the latest development of my journey with and Natalie. the ongoing saga of the team. The biggest news is that I recently been offered a promotional work. It's a great opportunity. I'd be leading a team developing a new AI-driven software platform. The catch. It would require relocating to a different state about 500 miles away. Normally, I would have jumped at the chance, but now with Natalie in the picture, it's not that simple. I brought up the possibility with Tina, and as expected, she was completely against. We had a long tense conversation. She argued that moving would disrupt Natalie's in life. In our current custody arrangement, she pointed out that Natalie had just Making started friends in her new school and selling into a routine with both we had a deep argument about. With Tina accusing me of putting my career before Natalie's wealthy, I spent weeks agonizing over incision. I talked to my boss about the possibility of working remotely, but the nature of the project requires me to be on site. I consulted with my lawyer about how a move might affect my custody rights. Even took Natalie on a weekend trip to the new city just to see how she might like it there. After a lot of soul-searching and discussions with my I've lawyer, I decided to turn down the promotion. It wasn't an easy decision. Part of me feels like I'm giving up a huge opportunity, but I realized that being close to Natalie is more important than to advancing me. my career right now. My boss was understanding and as promised to keep me in mind for future opportunities that don't require relocation. On a more positive note, Natalie and I have grown even closer. She's now calling me dead consistent, which fills me with joy every time I hear. We started a tradition of having a science every Saturday. time she stays with me for the weekend. We do simple experiments or watch educational videos together. Last weekend, we made a volcano, baking soda and vinegar in the backyard. Natalie was so excited when it erupted, and she insisted on doing it three more times. For curiosity and enthusiasm, constantly for learning. amazed regarding the situation with Tina's parents. Things have somewhat settled down. After much discussion and mediation, we've reached a compromise. They are allowed to see Natalie during my time, but we've agreed to take it slow and always prioritize Natalie's comfort. So far it seems to be working at Natalie enjoy spending time with him. Especially her grandfather who shares some love with husbands. We had a nice afternoon last month where we all work on the 500-piece jigsaw puzzle together. Peanut and I are still working on our co-parenting relationship. We've had our UPS and downs, but overall things have improved. We've even managed to attend one of Natalie's school events together without any drama which felt like a major accomplishment. It was a science fair and Natalie had made a project about the water cycle. Seeing her being with crime, she explained her project was both as a moment I'll never forget. I've started dating again casually. I'm being very cautious about introducing anyone's mouth, but it feels good to be moving forward with my personal life. I've been upfront about my situation with the women I'm dating, and while some who can understand, others have decided it's not for them. I'm okay with Natalie that. Natalie is my priority, and I need someone to accept that. One challenge we're currently facing is that Natalie has been asking more questions about why I wasn't around when she was young. It's a difficult topic to navigate, and Tina and I are trying to find a way to explain that's good honest. age of her. We've considered seeking help from a child psychologist to guide us through these conversations. It's important to both of us that Natalie understands she's and loved. And the situation wasn't before. Looking back on the past year, it's hard to believe how much it's changed. There have been moments of frustration, anger and sadness, but also incredible joy and love. Watching Natalie broke being part of her life has been the most rewarding experience of my life. I know we still have challenges ahead. As Natalie grows older, we'll have to navigate more complex issues and emotions, but I'm committed to being there for her no matter what. While I may not update this frequent, know that your words have made a real difference in helping me navigate this unexpected chapter of my life.